Come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship man. Just want to tell you. Come on. Lord, I love you. Come on, out. everybody in the building, lift your hand and just say, I love you, Jesus. I love Jesus. Come on, just worship him, worship him. I worship and adore. Lord, I want you to know. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Oh, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Father, we thank you. We love you more than anything. We love you today. Give you glory, give you honor because you're worthy. You're a great God, deserve a great praise. We look to you, you're our help, our strength. Can't make it without you, can't go on without you, can't live without you. We bless you today. Forgive us of sin, blot out our transgression. We bless you because of the blood of Jesus that covers our sins. Thank you, Father, that when you look at us, you don't see us, but you see the Son, the blood of your Son that covers our heart. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your power, your anointing. Thank you for your love. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Yokes be destroyed. Burdens be lifted. We give you glory. We give you praise. Help me now as I would share with your people. Help me to speak truth, nothing but truth. So help me, God. In Jesus' name, amen. St. John chapter 4. I have a very emotional message this morning. God bless Shonda. Another miracle. St. John chapter 4, verse 5 through 8. St. John 4, verse 30, verse 5 says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called a Sarkar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Uh, there cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples gone away unto the city to buy meat. You may be seated. And not too often do I preach a message, uh, the same message at 8 and 11. But I feel... I was going with something else, but I feel a need to share this lesson. Will you look at somebody and just tell them, I am not invisible. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm not invisible. Sometimes, People make you feel like you're invisible. You ever walk up on a crowd and they was talking about you? <laughs> and all of a sudden you can tell the conversation must have been about you. You can tell in their demeanor or the way they're reacting or what they're, how they're doing when they see you walk up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever felt so guilty, so bad about your life, so of what you've done that you wanted to be invisible? Ashamed and embarrassed? Look at somebody and tell them, but I'm not invisible. A homeless man by the name of Matt Coffey pulled an organ, he writes, I'm a homeless man. Some might call me a bum. Some don't call me anything. They pretend not to see me 
as I may be napping on the sidewalk. And they just walk over me like I don't exist, like I do not matter. I was not aware that the mere fact I do not have a roof means I do not have a soul. I did not know I do not matter, but I do. I have feelings just like you. I have dreams just like you. I bleed just the same as you. So you see, we're not so different, you and I. We all occupy the same blue ball and live under the same blue sky. We all cry sometimes. We all laugh sometimes. We are, after all, only humans. There have been times in our lives where we felt like this man. Time that you might have felt uh, people overlooked you. People seemed to think that you were invisible because your being there didn't really matter. Woo. Oh, there's times, as I've said, where you know that you've done so wrong, feel so guilty, that you want to run and hide under a rock. Anybody, anybody. Bless his name. When we're living as though we're unseen, it says that what we long for is identity. And when you long for identity, Feeling unseen, you end up in crisis. It's then when you have a desire for pleasure, but you end up requiring more and more to make you happy. When we want acceptance, uh, when you feel unseen, look like it becomes a greater sense of insecurity. We long to be seen and acknowledged, but we end up feeling jealous, envious, and just feel invisible. When pressed against our everyday lives, there might be times you wonder, do anybody see me? Do anybody see what I'm dealing with? Because it seems nobody will encourage me. Do anybody see that I'm hurting? Because nobody told me nothing. Do anybody see that I'm dealing with a situation in my life that I'm struggling with, but nobody sees me. Nobody has the word to tell me, uh, hang on in there, be encouraged. God going to take care. But it seems like they just walk away like I'm invisible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When press against our everyday lives, there might be times you wonder, do anybody really see me? Not see me for who they want me to be. This is a counseling session. Not see me for who they want me to be, but see me for who I am. I may not have dotted every I, crossed every T, but I am who I am by the grace of God. Can anybody identify you are who you are? And it's by God's grace. Might not be as good as you, as bad as you and things in life, but thank God we are who we are. And you know the good news about that? He loves you for who you are. Not who folks try to make you to be. He loves you for who you are. Somebody clap your hand and give him praise. When press against our everyday lives, Again, you wonder, do anybody really see me? See what you're dealing with? Do they see your pain? Do they really see your heart? Uh, because sometimes uh, your situation is not who you are. Bless his name. Do they see your heart that you long to be loved? You long to be appreciated? 
After a while, after a while, you just do and do and do and do, and you're not appreciated, or you feel you're not appreciated. You feel they don't even notice you anymore because they just expect you to have a meal ready. They, they, they just expect you to do because it's you. They just expect you to be there because you mama, because you daddy, because you, you, you supposed to do this for me. But, but somehow it makes you feel, am I that invisible? Do you know I have feelings too? Somebody clap your hand and give God praise. Do you know that I got struggles too? Sometimes folks can just overlook you, don't even see you. They see you, but they don't see you. Oh, God. See what you're doing. Deep inside, deep inside, you're just waiting for a chance to be known, to be known, and to be known without a mask. <sighs> To be known and you don't have to pretend. To be known and you don't have to fake it till you make it. Hallelujah. Well, it takes me to this lady in the text. The lady in the text walked up to that well one day as she always do about the same time, about 12 noon. She walks up to the well, already a slammed door in her face. She knew what to expect. Nobody was going to hold a conversation with her. And God forbid, nobody was even going to even speak to her. She was Samaritan. And the Jews wouldn't give her the time of day. She was shady. And considered unworthy, all the same, you know, because she had several failed marriages. She was considered an outcast, looked down upon by old people. She lived a life of being invisible. But I want somebody to know, I don't care what your life been like, what you've been dealing with, you are not invisible. People may overlook you, but I gotta put this in. God did not overlook you. If it had not been for God that was on your side, he's the one that pulled you through. He's the one that brought you out. He's the one that's been there for you. Somebody give God praise if you know what I'm talking about. While you're doing that, tell somebody, I am not invisible. Tell them, see me. See me with my hurt. See me in my struggle. See me with my issues. See me. I am not invisible. I need you to high five three people and tell them I'm not invisible. I hurt like you hurt. I feel like you feel. I, ah, but thanks be to God, you may not see me, but there is a God. There is a God. There is a God. There is a God. There is a, there is a God. There is a God that looks down upon you, that holds your hand. Clap your hand and praise him now. <laughs> Hallelujah. This woman was outcast, down by her own people. Well, it's evident, y'all, by the fact that she came alone to draw water from the community. And in biblical times, drawing water and chatting at the well was a social high point of, of, of a woman's day. But this woman was ostracized. She was marked as immoral. Unmarried, living openly with the six in a series of men. Stir the woman at the well teaches us something. It teaches us that God loves us in spite of our bankrupt lives. Just grab somebody by the hand and tell them God loves us in spite of our bankrupt lives. I done hit rock bottom, but God loves me. I done been down low, but God loves me. I need you to praise God like you know it and you believe it. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. He loves you. He values us 
enough to actively seek us, to welcome us to intimacy and rejoice in our worship. Listen, and I'm about done. As a result of Jesus' conversation, only a person like the Samaritan woman, outcast of old people, can understand what it really meant to meet somebody like this. What it meant to be wanted. What it meant to be cared for. Uh, cared for when nobody else wants you. Cared for when nobody else gives you attention. Cared for when there's nobody there. You don't help everybody, but nobody's there when you need them. When you didn't care and, and, and been there, helping them in the hospital and been there, helping your family, been there, helping your family, but time you need help, you can't find your family. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Where's my family? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's living an invisible life, not really seen by people and wanted to be unseen because of her past. Not seen by people and wanted to be unseen because of her past. I imagine as people saw her coming, they hid behind the refuge of the well. But there was one man who saw her. Aren't you glad he saw you one day? When nobody else saw me, he saw me. When nobody else could save me, he saved me. When nobody else can pull me up, he pulled me up. When nobody else can bring me out, he brought me out. When nobody else can love me like I needed it, he loved me. Somebody give him praise if you know what I'm talking about. I need you to high five three people and tell them, I am not invisible. Tell them, you may not see me, but I'm so happy this morning, God sees me. I don't even have to pretend. I ain't got to hide. I ain't got to act crazy. The Lord sees me. I am not invisible. Somebody clap your hand because you're getting your breakthrough this morning. Clap your hand and give God praise. Like you're glad about it. Like you're glad about it. Like you know that you know you are not invisible. If everybody forsake you, God not going to forsake you. Hallelujah. There was a man who saw. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He saw her and even asked her, Give me a drink. First thing she answered, and no doubt when she answered the question on the inside, her finger was probably just wagging at herself. You can't talk to him. You ain't got no business talking. He a Jew and you a Samaritan. You ain't even worthy. Why, why is he at the well, the only man at the well, at 12 o'clock and you're the only woman. He's going to be like everybody else. And there she is. She's, she knows what it is to live a life of invisibility because she's been there. She lives that. And now somebody going to really just take time to talk to her? Hold on. Catch what I said. Take the time. Let me tell you, in any relationship, you know what matters the most time? Somebody give God some praise right there. How could you ask me something to drink? She felt, she viewed, she was viewed as a woman, but she wasn't seen as a soul. All her life she was viewed as a woman, but they didn't see a soul. But when Jesus looked at her, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care how crazy your life feels right now. When Jesus looks at you, somebody praise the Lord. I believe this woman understood constant disapproval. Rejection, rejection was part of her daily fare. She fought against growing feelings of insecurity and insignificance. 
Maybe she loved the man who manipulated and abused her. Sensing her normal, she began to feel like it was normal as her emotional confusion paralyzed her. Maybe she felt it was just a normal way to live. Body gonna give me attention. Nobody's gonna love me the way I need it. Nobody's gonna care the way I need them to care about me. Nobody sense, nobody really see me for who I am. Oh my God today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody you about to get the breakthrough. But I come to tell you, you are not invisible. God wants you to know you are not invisible. I need you to tell two, three people you're not invisible. I don't care how you think like you got it made. I don't care how you feel like your, your, your house is good and your honey is good and, and then things are going good. I want you to know you're not invisible. Ah, God sees. God knows. God understands. Will you bless God? Will you bless God? Sometimes you can get caught up in something you just think is normal. She just thought it was just a normal thing. She couldn't go to the well when other women went. Couldn't, couldn't do like other people did. Ah. But she mattered. I come to tell somebody you matter. You matter. We encourage somebody to tell them you matter. Encourage somebody to tell them you matter. <laughs> they may have overlooked you, but God said, I didn't overlook you. I could have left you out there, but I saved you. They could have left you. They walked out on you, but God said, I'll never walk out on you. Somebody give him glory now. And the people of life no doubt manipulated her. So she's paralyzed. Maybe the church people were so quick to point out her sin and quote scriptures to explain why she was a failure and a disappointment. You know, folks will do that to you because they're so sad, they're quick to quote scriptures and show you your failures. And sometimes they're having you feel like you're nothing or having you feel like uh, you're not even worthy of God's love. But I come to tell somebody, you're not invisible. God sees you. God sees you. Your weeping not going to last always. Because they that sow in tears going to reap in joy. Weeping endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. God sees you. You're not invisible, brother. You're not invisible. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember, Ross. I remember when, when, when the disciples asked Jesus, they said, Lord, they ran upon a blind man and they said, Lord, who did sin? Did this man right here with his crazy self or his parents? The man was blind. He wasn't deaf. He can hear the folks talking about him. And then he can hear the folks talking about his parents. That didn't make him feel good. But God said none of that really matters because the glory of God is going to be shown today. Hallelujah. Sometimes folks will talk to you like you don't have good sense. Sometimes folks will talk to you like you ain't worthy, like you don't deserve to be blessed. Like you don't deserve for God to anoint you and use you. But I come to tell somebody this morning, God, God, God says, I see you. You are not invisible. You may be pulling an elephant, but you're not invisible. God says, I got your back. I got your cover. It's me that's seeking after you. Clap your hands and praise him. 
I really need you to praise him. Because there are some of you feeling like you invisible people talking about you. They walking all over you. They pushing you aside and they acting like you don't even matter. But I come to tell you, you do matter. You do matter. You do matter. What God has for you, it is for you. They might have pushed you aside, but you on your way up now. You on your way up now. God's going to anoint you. God's going to use you. Come Come on and praise him. Uh, I'm about done here. Oh, God, today. <sighs> Just tell somebody I'm not invisible. I hurt too. I feel. I'm not invisible. Ah. Uh, uh. You see, church people, they're quick to point out your sin and quote scriptures to explain why you're a failure and why you're a disappointment to God. Maybe, maybe she experienced a church that was creating rules and regulations that claims to be biblical, to dictate what she wore, to dictate where she went, and to dictate how she talked. But then she met Jesus. Her God. Who rescued her from life situations. And he rescued her from life situation. But rescued her to himself. I come to tell somebody God's rescuing you right now. He's rescuing you out of your situation, but he's rescuing you to himself. Ah, 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 ah. You are somebody, Jacoya. Ah. I need some praises. I need some. Will you help me give God a praise, somebody? Please help me. And just shout, I am not in this, I'm not invisible. Come on and shout, the Lord sees me. The Lord hears me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take your seat, I'm about done with my counseling session. Mm. Can I tell you? He frees her to cover her with grace. He frees her to cover her with grace, not to control her with guilt. Oh, my God today. My God today. My God today. My God today. He covers her with grace. And then control her with guilt. Stop trying to control people with guilt. Hallelujah. For the grace of God. Uh, by his grace we're saved. Not of ourselves. But it's a gift of God. God says he sees us. He values you. The quiet ways that no one may ever know about. The things you're dealing with, nobody knows. Nobody took the time to even talk to you. All they see is you smiling and you going about your way, but they never know the demons that attach to you. Satan has sent your way. Oh, my God. But God will encourage you so that you can be refreshed. You are not invisible, but you're highly cherished. You are appreciated and you're valued. God chose you. When you look at your mind, say, God chose you. And he loves you. I want you to consider this for a moment. The encounter begins with Jesus' need for water. Then the encounter moves 
to her need for his water. But then in a moment of splendid charity, the encounter returns to his need for her. I need you to go tell everybody what I did for you. I need you because of all the experience you had, because of all the stuff you've been through. The Lord said, I need you. For the Bible said, after the conversation, the woman left her water pot. She left the water pot at the well. The water pot was reminded her of all she's been through. The water pot reminded her of all her failures. The water pot reminded her of all the negativity in her life. But the Bible said she left the water pot at the well. She ran to the city. She said, come on, somebody see me now. Come on, I need you to see him who saw me. Will you shake somebody's hand and say you need to see him who saw me. Jesus saw me down in my sin. Jesus saw me. He knew I was not invisible. I felt invisible, but I'm so glad, so glad. Will you high five three people and say, I am not invisible. Yes, 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 yes. If you want to off, God will find you. If you're afraid, he'll reassure you. If you're broken, he'll restore you. If you're ashamed, he'll cover you. If you give up on him, he won't give up on you. So no matter where you are, God sees you for who you are. You are not invisible. Shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off and say, I thank God when nobody sees me. God sees me. God loves me. His hand is upon me. He will provide for me. He will protect me. He will look out for me. It's gonna be all right, cause God sees me. It's gonna be all right, cause God sees you. Come on and praise him. I am not invisible. You may not see me. You may not know what I'm dealing with. But he knows me. I'm not invisible. They may walk over me. feel like I'm nothing to nobody. But God told me to tell some of you this morning, you're not invisible. He sees you. If pastor don't see you, God sees you. And that's what matters the most. I want to pray for those of you that that's this message you say pastor that's me my sister my sister Margie was saying I was telling her what I was going to share she said well she normally watches I don't know if she's watching she normally do the 11 she said well I'm going to put on my church clothes and iPad <laughs> she said I'm going to I'm going to put on my church clothes and I'm going to sit in front of the iPad I was just sharing what was on my heart because I feel you. How some of you are feeling like you, 
you not notice like you feel it invisible like like people just overlooked you because they think you ain't saved enough because you're young and and you got your own things a different generation and they don't understand it you just feel invisible if that's you, I just want you to walk to the altar just where God will renew your strength. I need you to tell somebody, I am not invisible. I may not have it all together like you, but I am not invisible. Bless your mama. Bless your mama. My God. Some of you feel overlooked on the job or I know sometimes what it's like when, when somebody you want to be there, they're not there. That can be your parents, a mom, a dad, a loved one, or the person you really love and they're not there. But Mina, you're not invisible, baby. Dear, you're not invisible. Let me tell you all how you made it this for Deborah. Because God was walking with you. And sometime at your lowest point, it was God that was right there saying, I, the reason why you made it, you thought you needed them, but you had what you needed. Oh, he made me. So the word of encouragement today, Trip. You are visible. You're not invisible. People may not see. People may talk. They'll talk at you and talk about you. And, and understand, sometimes we want to be invisible because we feel so guilty and so wrong that you want to go hide under a rock. But God says, but I see you and I love you. for some of you because of life you're the black sheep of the family family members don't they don't treat you right and look like you give and give and give and give and never get anything back you put so much in but Deborah God says I see you Put so much in till you're about bankrupt. But God loves you with your bankrupt life. I'm going to pray. You have to encourage yourself on this one, okay? You have to tell yourself, I am visible. And, and, and you may have to tell somebody, but don't say it in a bad way. Just be sweet and say, hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm visible. I hurt. What you said hurt. What you said made me feel that little. Even if you have to tell me, there's a papa that hurt. Don't say that. Because that hurt. Because sometimes we can hurt people, not intentionally, but out of our mouth. I know, I know y'all, some of y'all tough, sticking stones may break your bones, but words don't hurt. I ain't got that. When I was saying that, I was lying. Because words hurt. How you respond, how you talk to one another, 
it hurts. If you talk harsh and brass and what you want, never mind. Don't, don't even worry about it. When I get a harsh answer, Jelante, I shut down. You too? I just shut down. I turn it off. That's what I do. I just shut down. I ain't talking. Don't want to talk. I got enough. Father, in Jesus' name, today is a day of, of a breakthrough for people that feel like they're being treated as though they're invisible. But not only treated like they're invisible, but because of their own pain and they want to be invisible. But you want, the, you want those on the altar to know that you care, you see, and it's because of you. Just like the woman at the well, God, you came for her because you had something for her to do. As she left her water pots and went to the city and proclaimed, come and see a man who told me everything I ever done. You took time out with her and God, there are some standing on the altar. You're just simply saying, I just want to take some time out with you. I don't want anybody around. I just want to take time with you. You just want them to take time, God, just to talk to you, to sit quiet, and not say nothing, just whisper in their ear of the things that you're going to do for them. I pray for release of all hurt. I pray for release, God, of guilt. I pray for release of pain. I pray for release of any bitterness we're harboring in our hearts because God you want your people to know they are not invisible. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Lift your hand and lift your head. Lift your hand and lift your head. Let God reclaim. Let God restore you. Let God ease your pain. Because he feels your pain anyway. He feels your pain. He feels every pain you're dealing with right now. God feels it. But he wants you to know. He sees you. And because he sees you, what the devil going to try to do, God says, it's not going to happen. What you thought you couldn't do, God says you can do all things. Well, you thought God was going to bless you. God said, not only would I bless you, but I'm going to supersede the blessing. Come on and give him praise all over the place. Give the Lord the praise. And God, we give you praise now. Come on. Pick them heads up. Pick them heads up. I see some head down. Pick your head up. Pick that head up. I am not invisible. I am not invisible. See me. There's a commercial on TV where the people has psoriasis or anybody know what I'm talking about? And people would look at their psoriasis and look at their disability and look at their challenge and, and the lady and the people would say I want you to see me and I know sometimes you can't tell people that see me because some folks can't handle you but you say God see me and God said I see you I see you with your jacked up self I see you with your messed up self I see you with your faults and failures. I need you to really give God praise right there. Hallelujah! 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 And because he sees you, man, he loves you so much. Amen? God bless you. We're on our way to Sunday school.